Coach Grant here, and today we cover the best protein source for optimal muscle protein synthesis as well as bioavailability. Now before we get into this, we have to understand that milk protein it consists of 80% casein and 20% whey. Both these protein sources are like different sides of the same coin. Uh, they have very different digestion rates. Casein slowly balls up in the stomach and sheds its outside layers, providing a sustained release of amino acids, while whey protein digests very quickly and provides a quick spike in amino acids in the body. Now, now that we understand this, we can get into this first study I'm going to present here called Time Dependent Regulation of Postprandial Muscle Protein Synthesis Rates After Milk Protein Digestion or Ingestion in Men. Now, what this study did is it took seven young, healthy men and took biopsy and blood samples every few hours to test how this milk protein ingestion actually affected muscle protein synthesis in a more objective way. And what it found is that the ingestion of 38 grams of milk protein resulted in rapid and sustained releases of amino acids into the bloodstream, providing optimal muscle protein synthesis at both the 0 to 120 marker and the 120 to 300 minute marker. Now, it is important to note that casein protein actually provides uh, the release of amino acids far far longer than five hour, five hours or 100 sorry, 300 minutes, uh, the testing just stopped at that point. But what the study suggests is that taking a split, an 80-20 split of casein to whey protein may actually provide the best muscle protein synthesis rates, providing the quick initial spike that comes with whey protein and the longer sustained release that comes with casein, because both of which have unique benefits, and you get both of said benefits by doing a 80-20 split, such as this study suggested, in muscle protein synthesis rates. Now next I want to look at bioavailability. Now, for a number of years, uh, we've looked at bio, or sorry, we've looked at protein quality through PIDCAS, protein digestibility amino acid score in this tiny letter writing over here. But it has many different limitations. One of the biggest ones being that it caps its score at one. So, if you're looking to distinguish higher quality protein sources, you can't with this protein quality score. You look at eggs, one. Casein protein, one. Whey protein, one. So on and so forth and so on and so forth. All testing at one until you get to lower quality sources. So what we've kind of changed, and also it doesn't look at bioavailability of amino acids in different protein sources as well. That's the second limitation. Now lately we've kind of been changing measuring protein quality through PIDCAS to DIAS, Digestible Indispensable Amino Acid Score. And this one is far better because it eliminates uh, those those limitations that come with PIDCAS. Now, they're still creating the database for this, and it's gonna be in use in the next two to five years, but at the same time, now we can look at it because it has no caps and scores, so you can better distinguish higher quality protein sources, and on top of that, it measures amino acid bioavailability by testing the quality in the ileum, which is a far better way to actually test the uh, quality of protein. And now, what this what this score shows in Diaz is that casein actually has a 1.18 score, while weight protein has a 0.97 score and where this difference comes from is in the bioavailability of amino acids. Casein is digested far better, I'm assuming because of the slow release, than whey protein does. So two arguments here to show that a, pr a predominantly casein protein uh, possible blend may be far optimal for muscle protein synthesis as well as bioavailability when looking to supplement with protein. Think about covering it for this topic. It's Brandon Morgan signing up.